is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video tonight i have your full clash of champions 2019 full show review for you guys as you guys know i'm going to run through the entire car breaking down every single matchup what i personally thought about the matchup letting you guys know every single thing that happened on the show from the matches to the feuds to everything going into the matchup the attires anything that i thought that you guys should know i will be letting you know about my personal opinion and breaking down everything about clash of champions 2019 to be honest with you guys going into the show i wasn't that excited for but every time that seems to happen, it's sort of like a theme for WWE. Anytime I go into a pay-per-view not really looking forward to it per se, I end up being very pleased with the outcomes, and the matches usually end up being a lot better than I think, and I really just kind of, you know, underplay the value of it. So that's what I was doing with this show. Will it end up being great? Let's go ahead and find out and dive into the first matchup of the night on the pre-show. So the first matchup, guys, was a triple threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship between the champion Drew Gulak competing against Humberto Carrillo and Lince Dorado. And I got to be honest with you guys, I was looking forward to this matchup coming in. It's one of the matchups that I was looking forward to. Uh, just with the Luchador styles tied in with, you know, the sort of strong style, you know, ground and pound style of Drew Gulak. I was really looking forward to this one. And it did not disappoint. I think they went about 10 minutes. It was very entertaining. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I will say they had a lot of unique spots in this matchup. But I will say near the end, it did get a bit sloppy. It's like they kind of got out of whack. Maybe a bit of, uh, of fatigue taking over in this matchup. But uh, Drew Gulak does end up retaining the championship, even though the ending sequence was very sloppy. It looked like they were gassed totally to death, but Lince Dorado does take the pinfall to Drew Gulak and he does retain, which I do agree with. I love Drew Gulak. I like this run that he's on and I think it was the right decision here for him to retain. Next up, guys, we had the match that I was actually most looking forward to. The second matchup on the pre-show, which really upset me, guys. I really don't know why you had AJ Styles. Your uni not only is it AJ Styles, but it's your United States champion and my boy Cedric Alexander here on the pre-show. I just didn't agree with this. You know, people can say it doesn't matter. People can say you know, it's you're still you're still on a pay-per-view for WWE, but you know as well as I do that most of these arenas are half full on the pre-show, and I just think that AJ Styles one deserves to be on the main show. Why not start off the real card, the main card? Like at the end of the at the end of the day, is it a massive deal? Is it game and life changing? No. But at the same time, you know, I think that it would have been much better to kick the show off with this matchup and you know start off the home crowd hot for Cedric Alexander, but that did not happen. Anyways, getting into the matchup, guys, I just wanted to talk about that for a second. This matchup was a banger. I don't think they went very long at all. I literally think they went like six or seven minutes. They may have even went shorter than that. This matchup was fire. And what I'm saying, if you could book a matchup really fast, I would want it to be like this. This was freaking nice. I loved this. I think that it made both guys look very good. I hate that, you know, uh, Cedric Alexander did fall. AJ Styles did defeat Cedric. But my God, were there some sweet spots in this match. Styles clash on the outside of the floor. Cedric Alexander sold the hell out of the phenomenal forearm. It it took not only a Styles Clash on the floor, but also a phenomenal forearm and another Styles Clash on top of that to put away Cedric Alexander. But Cedric was rocking a beautiful Charlotte Hornets attire. He was looking great. My boy was looking fresh out there. But he does ultimately come up short to the U.S. champion, which I, I pretty much predicted this. I knew that this would happen because I didn't think, you know, they were going to put him over so easily here. But he's got a bright future. I love him to death. One of my favorite talents in WWE. And this was just a great one. After the match, however, the club did beat the hell out of Cedric. So hopefully this feud continues. Maybe my boy will capture that U.S. title, but he did get his arse kicked after the bell by the club and AJ Styles. So we started off the main show, guys, with the Raw Tag Team Championship match, which I figured they would start the matchup or the show this way because you know that Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins are serving double duty on this night, fighting in a Universal Championship match against each other later on in the night in the main event, most likely. So here we had Dolph Ziggler, my boy, and Robert Roode, who grew out the facial hair. Now, I was really digging the mustache, but I guess they ditched that gimmick already. And he's back to full facial hair, which means I took the beard off of this Bobby Roode head scan for nothing. However, Seth Rollins... Rollins and Braun Strowman, the Raw Tag Team Champions coming in here. You know, this matchup was actually very solid. I thought the, the pace in this matchup was fantastic. Up to this point, all three matches thus far had delivered. I really did enjoy this matchup. I thought they were flying all over the place, man. I mean, I hate that they keep going with the hot tag dynamic every single effing match, but it actually kind of makes sense with a guy like Braun Strowman, and I really did enjoy this matchup a lot. I thought that there were a lot of great things, great sequences. That one sequence where like every man was just killing each other, uh, Seth Rollins died to the outside. Go over the knee. Misses. Gets Spinebuster. Super kick to Brock. Like, it was crazy sequences there. But, ultimately, Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman lose after a glorious DDT to the Universal Champion. I didn't like the way Seth Rollins was pinned and, you know, lost the championship there, but I guess you're trying to protect Braun, but at the same time, you need to protect the Universal Champion. But, uh, and, and it was kind of way too 
quick, man. I feel like, you know, the, the Universal Champion went down very, very quickly here in this quick matchup, but it was a great matchup. I really did enjoy it, and we have new Raw Tag Team Champions, so Dolph Ziggler now, I think this is like his fifth Tag Team Championship reign or so, and this is like his third Tag Team Championship reign with the Raw Tag Team titles or something like that, and uh, Bobby Roode, this is his second uh, championship now in WWE, right? If uh, Third, if you count the NXT, but he has been a U.S. champion, and now he has been a Raw Tag Team Champion, so that's pretty cool. So Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler are your Tag Team Champion. I mean, I can get behind them, whatever. You know, they are a thrown-together tag team, which I'm not a fan of, but you know what? Uh, Dolph Ziggler lifts up anybody, and this was a banger to kick off our show. I enjoyed it, but Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman are uh, going head-to-head -head later on for the Universal title after blowing it with their Raw Tag Team Championships. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Bayley and Charlotte coming in. I was really looking forward to this one on paper. You know, two of the best female workers in the company. I like Bayley a lot. And I like Charlotte. You know, not my favorite, but I do like her. I do respect her in the ring. One of the better performers here. And uh, this matchup was much quicker than I anticipated. I felt like every matchup in the t on this night, maybe besides the Cruiserweight match, was very high-paced and, uh, you know, high-impact. Uh, this one was pretty high-paced as well. Um, you know, very good up front. You know, it wasn't any Anything immaculate, but it was it was pretty good for what we got. The end of the matchup did come when uh, Bailey uh, or the referee was in Charlotte's face, and Bailey used that time to remove the bottom turnbuckle of one of the corners, and she smacked Charlotte's face off of it and pins her one, two, three. And actually, I enjoyed this. I mean, I hate that Bailey had to resort to this to win, but I know she's like in this weird heelish phase. I know and I say weird heelish phase because she's been acting babyface and heel at the same time. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but she does defeat Charlotte here, which is is good because I didn't want them to just give the championship right back to Charlotte. I like that Bailey continues this this run that she's been on. You know, they used to like just take the title immediately off of her. So it's really nice to see her continue this reign and uh, you know can get some wins under her belt, even if it is by cheating. Uh, I can get behind it. So Bailey does retain her SmackDown Live Championship. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live side of things as far as the Tag Team Championships go. Between the New Day, the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions taking on the Revival. I was looking forward to this one as well. Two great teams on paper. And uh, this one was very interesting. You know, I did enjoy the matchup. Nothing, again, not anything crazy or anything. Uh, it wasn't over the top. It wasn't too overdone. Uh, mainly, you know, it was kind of some dominance by the Revival. You know, they hit a Shatter Machine on the outside to Big E. Very nice move. Um, it came down to the end of the matchup. And the Revival... Revival, they, they shatter machine Xavier Woods, and they have a beautiful opportunity to just pin Xavier. I was like, this is going to cost them the match, man. This is going to cost them the match. They yank off Xavier Woods' knee brace. They tear his beautiful brand new gear in, in half in the knee part, and they lock him in this like reverse uh, figure four leg lock, and uh, he's forced to tap out, guys. And now, not only do we have new Raw Tag Team Champions, we have new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, and the Revival defeat the New Day, and I don't know where they're going from here. Are they trying to write Xavier Woods off television? Is he dealing with an injury? I'm not sure, but on this night, the Revival stands tall, and after this, you know, I kind of, I think I predicted that they were going to go with, you know, Randy Orton and the Revival both winning the championships, and that is, uh, that's definitely possible now, so now, the Revival now have won the Raw Tag Team and SmackDown Live Tag Team titles, as well as the NXT Tag Championships, so that is very cool there. I'm a big supporter of the Revival, I like them a lot, and they win the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships here. Uh, we, we've seen some great wrestling thus far. Next up, guys, we have the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross taking on Fire and Desire, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose. Now, I really wasn't looking forward to this because I really cannot get behind Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross as a tag team, let alone as baby faces here. You know, I just don't buy it. I still just can't get over that. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, coming in, I really did want Fire and Desire to win this matchup and take the tag titles off of them, but that did not happen in this matchup. However, uh, this matchup was actually a lot better than I expected it to be. While, you know, I wasn't really invested in the matchup. I didn't care what happened per se. Uh, you know, it was a lot better than I expected it to be. But Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross do retain the Women's Tag Team Championships, and I guess we're going to see uh, who's next for these ladies as they continue to uh, uh, push on with their championships. 
Next up, guys, was the Intercontinental Championship match between Shinsuke Nakamura taking on The Miz here. A babyface Miz versus a heel Shinsuke Nakamura. And I don't know where the hell I've been, but Sami Zayn apparently is the mouthpiece for Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, Sami Zayn is a great heel and he does great mic work, but I don't know. This is definitely weird. I actually wanted, after this matchup, I wanted Sami Zayn to just hit Shinsuke with a low blow like he used to do to AJ Styles, turning on Shinsuke, turning babyface, and having that be your feud for the Intercontinental Championship. That would be money right there. Take my money. That's your next money match. They can relive their takeover days and tear the damn house down. But anyways, this matchup was pretty solid as well. You know, nothing to write home about. Nothing memorable probably about this matchup, but it actually was good. I thought there were some good sequences, and I think Miz is actually pretty underrated in the ring. I feel like every time he gets in there with somebody who can go, I feel like he, he puts on matches, man. Ziggler, Rollins, Nakamura. Dude can freaking ball. He's even done it with Finn Balor as well, so that's just something I wanted to add, but Shinsuke Nakamura does retain the Intercontinental Championship, and again, hopefully we get a Sami Zayn face turn, and we can get back to the old Sami Zayn, and we can get a Nakamura Sami Zayn feud, and we can get some freaking NXT magic going again, but I am glad to see Shinsuke retain here in this Intercontinental Championship match. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we had our Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks, two of the better women in the entire world, in my personal opinion here, going head to head, and you guys know I'm a big Becky Lynch fan coming in here, you know, I did not know what to expect from this matchup as far as the winner, you know, I could see them strapping the rocket to Sasha Banks, and you know, having her take off as a top heel, you know, because she returned, she had this big return, she took out Becky, and this was going to be a good one, and I enjoyed this matchup, man, I mean, I thought that they showed some real grit, I liked that, you know, we had the ref bump, the ref bump was hilarious, I laughed so hard at that, guys, uh, Becky Lynch goes to take out Sasha with a chair, Sasha was trying to cheat, she went after a chair, and uh, Becky Lynch ended up picking up the chair, she swung the chair to hit Sasha Banks, and she ducked out of the way, and the ref gets hit, like, decked in the shoulder, and then he just... He acts like he is completely unconscious in the corner. These freaking refs are made of just paper, and that's how it's always been, but still hilarious nonetheless to watch play out in this match. Uh, these women would battle all over the arena, you know, going backstage, beating the hell out of each other, uh, just getting involved in the crowd. Very nice stuff there, but ultimately this match is thrown out due to disqualification, and Sasha Banks wins by disqualification, which means Becky Lynch is still your Raw Women's Champion, which is okay with me. That means that we're going to get another matchup out of these two, and I cannot wait for that one. Maybe with a stipulation would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe locked inside Hell in a Cell if it gets bad enough. I don't know. But we will have to see what plays out here. But Becky Lynch does remain your Raw Women's Champion. Next up, guys, was my boy Randy Orton taking on the WWE Champion Kofi Kingston for the coveted prize here in this semi-main event. We had uh, these two going head-to-head. -head. I was really looking forward to this one as well. Probably the second or third most match that I was looking forward to here. And it was a long one, man. They let him go, and, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of got boring at moments. I'm not going to lie, but then again, I was exhausted watching this show. Like, my God, I could literally pass out at any moment watching this show, and uh, it, it's a a real shame because the show it's not like the show was where I was just so exhausted and this this match uh, this almost nearly put me to sleep at one point but they did deliver near the end you know I didn't like the the predictable ending there going for the punt kick missing trouble in paradise one two three Kofi wins but that is what they went with and Kofi Kingston is still your WWE champion I would have really loved to seen Randy win here but now that he has lost cleanly I don't know where they go from here man I think it would have been great to establish him as the top heel I don't know who they're going to get to dethrone on this man Kofi Kingston but for now he is going to safely retain the WWE Championship and my god is he on a great reign man I mean he's defending the title he's putting on good matches he's looking strong as a champion I mean that's what I love to see out of a champion but I am I am not gonna lie to you uh, I was rooting for Randy Orton in this one but he does come up short and Kofi Kingston remains your WWE Champion Next up, guys, we have the no disqualification match between Roman Reigns and Eric Rowan. And, you know, I really wasn't really looking forward to this match at all because, you know, I'm just I'm just not invested in it. I do like the mystery angle they went with. And I was getting used to, you know, Eric Rowan having this little singles run here, ditching away from Daniel Bryan, sort of having his own path right here. Roman Reigns, you know, getting the big dog feud going right here. I thought that the big dog was going to let him down softly and bury the hell out of him. But out of nowhere in this matchup, guys, here comes... 
comes Luke Harper. Luke Harper returns out of nowhere. Everybody thought he was gone. Everybody thought he was just going to wait and wait and wait and rot and get released by WWE, but he's here. He's back with his bludgeoned brother, Rowan, and he takes out Roman Reigns. They take out Roman Reigns, and, and he wins. Rowan beats the big dog thanks to Luke Harper, and I'm so excited, man. I love Luke Harper. This is fantastic. I love this, and I am I'm ready to see where this goes from here. You know, what are we going to see? But let's, let's be real. It's ultimately probably going to lead to the big dog burying them both. But uh, for now, you know what that means. You know what I'm saying? Luke Harper and Rowan running butt naked on the big dog, and they, they defeat him, man, here, here tonight at Clash of Champions. What a thing to see. Didn't expect this at all, and uh, I think this was the man that was driving the forklift. But Rowan defeats Roman Reigns thanks to the help of his bludgeon brother partner. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we have my boy Seth Rollins, the Universal Champion, taking on the Monster Among Men, Braun Strowman. And coming into this thing, I wasn't really looking forward to this matchup because I did not like that we had this, you know, thrown together Raw Tag Team Championship run for both of them. And then, you know, they're squaring off in a Universal Championship match. And uh, I guess this was just sort of a, a little bridge, if you will. I guess Braun Strowman was just sort of a, a little stepping stone on the way to the next feud. And I'm not going to lie to you, this match was was pretty entertaining. They were flying all over the arena. It was very high-paced. A lot of action tonight was high-paced, uh, besides like a couple matches, and it was very enjoyable for the most part because of that. I like high-paced action. I like big power moves. I like big reversals. I like finishing moves. I like the near falls, and uh, that's what we got out of this match. Really great stuff, man. Just a ton of fun in this matchup. Was it the greatest match ever? No, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, I underestimated this matchup, and they delivered, man. I love Rollins and I, I should have figured that Rollins was going to put on a good one, but I do like Strowman. I just think that his ship sailed so long ago and now we have another prime example of him missing another opportunity here in the main event, which I think was the right move right now. I just don't think that it works out. Uh, if you were going to put the title on him, it should have been two years ago, 2017, at the peak of his run. It would have been way better then. You know, have him win that Fatal 4-Way or whatever versus Samoa Joe, and whatever that was. I think when Brock, like, TKO'd him in the jaw that one time, probably should should have won there. I think there was another time before that he could have won. Uh, he has lost to Brock many times, but uh, Seth ultimately puts him away here and retains the Universal Championship, which I totally agree with. And, you know, Clash of Champions is going off the air. Seth Rollins is on the stage, ready for this show to go off. And out of nowhere, here comes... And out of nowhere, here comes the Bray Wyatt Fiend. The Fiend Bray Wyatt comes out of nowhere, Brad. And, you know, the lights go out, the crowd reacts. Everybody knows what's about to happen, guys. The Fiend comes out of nowhere and just freaking destroys Rollins. Gets him in the Sister Abigail. Hits the Sister Abigail. Locks in the Mandible Claw and destroys Rollins on the stage. And it looks like all the rumors were true. It looks like we are going to be getting a Hell in a Cell matchup most likely a Hell in a Cell matchup between The Fiend Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins and possibly Braun Strowman thrown in there, but Braun clearly lost to Seth. You know, The Fiend didn't interfere, so it's probably going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And we may be looking at a Fiend Universal Champion come Hell in a Cell, guys. I am super-duper excited for this, and I cannot wait to see where this feud goes with Rollins, and maybe it can get some better character work out of him working with Wyatt, working with this Fiend character, and I cannot wait. But The Fiend shows up at Clash of Champions. Champions. Very happy for that. Very excited for that. And I cannot wait to see what happens. You know, we predicted it in our setup video and we talked about it in the predictions. And here it came to life against Seth Rollins as Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, shows up and he is going after that Universal Championship. Cannot, cannot wait for that. But uh, that is going to do it for your Clash of Champions 2019 full show review, guys. We have breaking down every single thing that happened at the show. Um, I'm excited to see where this feud goes again. You know, uh, uh, overall, I think Clash of Champions was a pretty successful show. I think a lot of the matches did deliver. There were a couple stale moments for me. However, for the most part, I found myself intrigued, but I was thoroughly exhausted, and I think that had a big impact on myself. Uh, I tweeted, you know, that I cannot wait for the show to be over. It wasn't because, you know, the show was bad. It was because I was literally, like, I was a literally just so exhausted that I just wanted to go the hell to sleep and now that this is up I'm going to go the hell to sleep and sleep like a baby and a freaking rock but thank you guys so very much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed the review if you did please comment down below what you thought of Clash of Champions or the review itself subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure content such as this and many many more things 
Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.